Welcome to a new episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how to use a MISC device in a Linux driver. But first let's talk about what is a MISC device. So a MISC device is kind of like a character device. So you can find it in the slash dev folder and you can overload different file operations like read, write, IO control and so on to it. But there are two major differences to a character device. The first one is the MISC device always has the major device number 10. And on a character device you can choose the major device number more freely. And the second difference, which isn't really bad, is the MISC device it is much more easier to set up than the character device. You need a lot less functions to set up a MISC device than you would need for a character device. In today's video I want to show you how to use this MISC device. So here I am connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and let me cd into my Linux driver tutorials folder. And if I do an ls here you can see all the kernel modules I've already made. And as a base for today's video I will use this simple hello world Linux kernel module. So let me copy it and create a new folder I will call 27 MISC device. And let me cd into it. Yeah, here I am. So what we have here is the source code for our Linux kernel module and we have our make file. So first thing I will do is I will rename the module from my module to misctest.c and I have to change this in the make file as well. Okay, so now let me open up the source code and you can see yeah this is really just a simple hello world Linux kernel module all we have here is an init and an exit function and that's it. Okay so now let's implement a misc device. Therefore I will need two more includes. First I have to include the file system for the file operations and so on and I have to include linux slash misc device here for our misc device and let me change the description here for a MISC device. So setting up a MISC device works similar than setting up a driver like we have seen in the SPI or I2C video. So the first thing we need is a static struct from the type MISC device and I will call it my device and this struct contains all the information about the MISC device. So we have a name field here and I will call it test device and this is also the name which will show up in slash dev when we are going to load this module here. Then the second thing here is the minor number. So I already told you the major number is fixed, it's always 10, but you can choose the minor number dynamically and you can type hard code a number in here but if you want the system to choose a number dynamically, you can use misc dynamical minor and this will choose the next or dynamic, not dynamical, misc dynamic minor and this will choose the next three minor device number. And the last um, field here are the file operations and here we have to pass the file operations we want to implement here. Okay, so now let me change the init function here. First I will need a new variable from the type int. And here let me print musk test register musk device. So this works similar like registering a driver. So I will call the function misc register and I will pass our misc device drug. So I will pass a pointer to my device. And in case the value is not equal to zero, an error occurred, I will print out an error message. Error during register. This device level will return the negative status here. And in case everything worked fine, I will return zero here. And down here in the um, exit function, I will call misc deregister and this will um, remove our misc 
device once again. So this works um, quite similar to uh, um, yeah, registering and unregistering a driver here. Okay, and now we have to implement some more things. So we have to implement our file operations and we have to implement our callback functions. Okay, so now I need a struct from the type um, file operations. So I need a static construct um, and from the type file operations and I will call it file fops. So we have an owner here. The owner will be this module. We have a read function, which I will create in a second. I will call it my read. We have a write function. I will call my write. We will have an open function. I will call my open. And last but not least, we have a release function. I will call my close here. Yeah, so much for the file operations. Now let's implement the callbacks and then we are already done. Pretty easy, isn't it? So first let's start with the open function. Here we have two arguments from, from the type struct inode and I will call it inode. The second one is from the type struct file and I will call it file. And yeah, let's print out a message. Mm -hmm. So I will print out open called and here in the inode variable, we can get some information about our, the device file we are opening. So for example, we can get the major and minor device number. To do so, all we have to do is, I will add this as a print here, major DUI or device numbers, numbers. First, let's print out the major and then the minor. And to get this, I will use the function my I major and I will pass in the I node and then I minor and pass in the I node once again. And here in the struct file, we can get more information about the file. For example, the permissions with which the file was open. So if I check the F mode field of the struct with F mode read, I can find out if the device was open with read permissions. So open called with read permissions and if f mode and f mode write is bigger than zero, the file was called with write permissions. Okay, let's return zero here and we're already done. Then let's go on with the close callback. The arguments are the same as for open. And here I will write close called and I will just return zero here. And now the last two missing things are read and write, but the question is to what we want to read or write. So let me declare a data array here. And I need to define a max size, which will be 256 here. And I will use a size t variable, which I will use called data len here. Okay, so now let me implement the um, write callback here. The first argument is from the type struct file and it's a pointer to uh, the current file we are writing to. The next argument is um, is the data coming from user space and I will use this under under user flag here to indicate this data is coming from user space. Then we have the size t user length, so the length of this user buffer here. And last but not least, we have argument from the type LOFFT, which is a pointer where I'll give the name P position. So if we would use LSEQ, for example, we could change the current reading position and we would get it in this variable here. But I won't use it in today's video. Once again, I need a status variable here. And the first thing I will do is I will check if the user length is bigger than the data length, because if so, data length will be max size and else data length will be user length. Okay, so now I can do the 
copy from user because we are copying from user space to kernel space. So the first argument here is the destination. So I want to copy into my data array here. The source is the user buffer and data len is this number of bytes I want to copy in case this is bigger than zero an error occurred and I will print out um, misc device error during copy from user and let's return the negative status here. Yeah, I forgot two things here. So I need a new line character. Yeah, and I need to close this braces here or this tags ticks here. And in case everything worked fine, I will return um, data len here. Okay, and now we have to um, and maybe let's add a print here too. Print k misc device um, write called so let me copy these lines here because the arguments for the read callback are quite similar the only difference here is this buffer is not a const because we want to write into this buffer so first let me check if the user len is smaller than the data len in this case and the new variable for the actual len, so DTL. Um, in this case, it's user len, else it's. So here, once again, I'm just checking the number of bytes I can copy. Then I will call copy to user. This time, I will copy into my um, user buffer, and I'm copying it from the data buffer, and I want to copy. Um, len number of bytes. Yep. Yeah, and maybe let's put this up here and put this down here. Right, read called. And in case an error occurred, I will copy these five lines here. So here, error during copy to user. I will return the status and in good case I will return the len here and that should be it. So now let me try to compile it and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay, this looks good. So let me become root user and let's load our curl module or maybe before let's check our device files. And if I want to see a test device here, there is no such device, but now if I'm loading my new misc device and if i'm doing this once again you can see yeah cool now there is such a device and if we look at the um, and if we look at the parameters we can see the major device number is 10 the minor is 125 now let's use echo to write something to the device. So let's write um, hello world into the device. And now let's use head to read one line back of our device file here. And we get hello world. And if we look at the kernel flock, we can see we have called open here. Or maybe let's the last 50 entries so here we are loading or registering our misc device then we are calling open device numbers are okay it was just the one we have seen with, with the ls command and at the first open we are opening the file with write permissions then we call it write then we close the file again and then we open once again with three permissions and read the string back here and now if we remove our misc device here Yep, our file should be gone here. Yeah, now it's gone again. Okay, cool. So that's how to use a MISC device in a Linux driver. I think it's really a little bit easier than using normal character device because setting it up is much more easier. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a co coffee on buymycoffee.com slash Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.